All right, y'all. So I'm gonna make a uh, real quick scouting mech building guide and how to make a uh, a good scout mech for the scout mode uh, for both Inner Sphere and Clan, based on my experience that I've had. I won't be editing this video at all, so it's just gonna be a live commentary. Um, you know, take it for what you will. But uh, let's let's get right into it. So purpose of this is that way people can get some uh, some pretty good loadouts going for scouting. You know. Um, it may not be immediately obvious and what's good and what isn't, what works and what doesn't. Uh, but in my experience playing this game since closed beta, you know, way back when, many, many years, um, I play primarily lights and mediums, so I, I think I have a fair amount of experience to talk about, you know, light and medium combat. So I've established in this scouting mode that there are four roles that should be considered. So you have your. Uh, anti-light mechs, which are, you know, shriek boats, like, let's say, the uh, Storm Crow here, you know, with uh, five shriek sixes. And uh, though it doesn't have necessarily be a streak boat, you can use a lot of lasers as well if your aim is good and steady. Um, they're just mechs that are designed exclusively to destroy other light mechs quickly and efficiently without getting damaged too much. Now, the next one is a, is a brawler mech, SRM heavy mechs, like, uh, let's take the Griffin, Griffin 2N here. So this one here has got the four SRM4s, that's uh, considered a brawler or a splat mech, as it's sometimes referred to. So you have your splat mechs which are good against other medium mechs and sometimes light mechs if you have good aim and can lead your target well. But if you can't lead your target, then it's usually only good against medium mechs because they're bigger targets. They're a bit slower. Um, they don't specialize doing direct damage all that well, but uh, they still do a lot of damage overall, which is pretty important. Uh, the important thing about SRM heavy mechs is that they don't care about ECM, so they don't need that lock on that like uh, streak mechs do. So next, after Brawlers, third role is Direct Fire Mechs, and that's your, your heavy laser loadouts, your AC-20, Blackjacks, Centurions, you know, other mechs that can mount uh, heavy auto cannons, Gauss rifles, that kind of thing. Uh, these mechs are meant primarily to, you know, take very specific limbs off of mechs, like legs, uh, core people out, you know. Um, they're, they're Direct Fire because their, uh, their fire is more concentrated than, say, an SRM Brawler. These guys are pretty skill dependent. Uh, it takes a really good pilot to do well in these things. Obviously, it's not it's not easy to hit a light mech with an AC-20. You know, uh, anyone can attest to that. And then finally, the last category you have is support mechs. Support mechs are basically mechs that uh, don't fit any other role. So either because of sheer I don't know size or combat ineffectiveness, they can't carry that many weapons. They're fragile. Whatever. Uh, they have very specialized roles. Uh, within their own role, that is, to either support the mission, you know, like gathering intel beacons, denying intel beacons, uh, doing recon work, or supporting a main brawl. They generally don't do well in one-on-one -on -one fights, and usually cannot support themselves. So, like a locust would be a very good example of that. Now, you can do a lot of damage with a large pulse laser locust, you know, if you're sitting around and uh, no one pays attention to you. But, you know, 1v1 Street Crow, Crow versus a Locust, uh, Locust is going to lose every single time. So, uh, support mechs are really nice if uh, you're, you're in the middle of a big brawl, you know, and uh, no one's paying attention to you. That's, that's really where they shine. Outside of that, though, uh, they're not really all that combat effective. So, moving on from the four roles, there's uh, certain weapons to use. You know, what works and what doesn't. Um... So, from what I've seen in the field, there's been a few times where people would bring, you know, PPCs, or large lasers, Gauss rifles, that kind of thing. Um, you don't really have the tonnage to really make that work. And uh, even, even as far as Intersphere, so Intersphere PPCs have that minimum range of 90 meters, right? So, really terrible for brawling. They're heat inefficient. Um, there's no real point in bringing them, honestly. Same thing with LRMs, machine guns, flamers. I, I don't see a use for any of those, to be honest, in this game mode. Um, your mileage may vary, but that's just my experience. Uh, Clan ER large lasers, those are particularly bad for this mode due to their crazy, crazy, crazy long burn time. Uh, they're like one of the most heat inefficient weapons in the game. I would not recommend those at all. 
Now I know some of you are thinking, hey, well, what about uh, what about the you know the ER Large Laser Raven? And I would say your mileage may vary on that one as well because yeah, they can poke from a far, far away, but 90% of the time, the matches you're going to be up against and scouting matches are going to be very close range, you know, sub 270 meters. Uh, yeah, and, and most mechs can catch up with you anyway, so you can't really keep them at long range either. You know what I mean? So, don't really recommend bringing a Raven. Um, it, it does have ECM and it does have, you, you can kit it out for short range. I find them just to be somewhat fragile. Um, so, weapons you do want to consider are, you know, um, small pulse lasers, small lasers, both Intersphere and Clan. Uh, Intersphere medium lasers are nice, but the Clan medium lasers are just way too hot, and you don't really need the extra range they offer, so I would avoid those. So, like, Nova builds with tons and tons of Clan ER mediums are just not, not worth it. Uh, SRMs, of course, those are nice. Although I do not recommend streaks, intersphere streaks on uh, on intersphere mechs, because the SRM twos are just kind of, uh, the streak twos are kind of underwhelming against anything bigger than a light mech, so I wouldn't recommend those. Uh, medium pulse lasers are good. Uh, those those take a little bit more heat management on your side, but they can work. Uh, Gauss rifles, I don't really like to bring those because they they weigh as much as an AC twenty, and honestly, at these ranges. I'd rather have an AC-20 because the cool down, the cool down rate is faster and uh, they're not as fragile as Gauss rifles are. So, moving on from weapons, you're going to have electronics next. So like your, your Beagle Active Probe, your ECM, your Artemis, Command Console, Clan Targeting Computers, all that good stuff. So, um, for clans, ECM is an absolute must if you have it. Uh, BAP is also an absolute must for uh, streak mechs, but I, in most cases, I even, I even recommend building it uh, on non-streak mechs, to be honest, just so you can get that clarity of information so you're not jammed and, you're, and your teammates can uh, get that paper doll information quicker. Um, Artemis for missile heavy mechs, that's really up to you, unless you're running exclusively streaks, because I think right now they still haven't fixed that thing where if you're, if, uh, if you have, say, like, uh, Artemis, you know, even Artemis on a heavy streak mech, or streak heavy mech, uh, it still speeds up the, uh, the lock-on time. Even if, you know, the Artemis is not really supposed to be attached to streak missiles, but I think it still works, so. Uh, try that out for sure. You can try it out in the training grounds. That, uh, you should see a noticeable difference. Uh, command console for Intersphere, there's absolutely no point in bringing that, so avoid it. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's, uh... That's the weapons and equipment. Uh, specific chassis you might see. Uh, Street Crow obviously is the uh, the primary one for the clans. Everyone knows and hates those or likes to play them. Uh, it doesn't really matter. The point is, they're not some invincible boogeyman. You know, they can be taken out. They're not incredibly heat efficient either. I mean, if we just go in here and uh, let's, let's, let's make one real quick, right, so you guys can see. So let's just add all the, all the missile points. So I don't think these have any quirks either. No. So this thing has absolutely no quirks at all, as far as I know. So, the usual one I've seen has been like uh, five streak sixes, right? So, now these don't need a whole lot of ammo because uh, they're very heat, uh, they're very ammo efficient, and uh, you won't need too much. Now I, I have seen some people. Um, why can't I put that? No. Oh, it's already got it. Does it already have a bat? No. I've seen some people. Uh, what do you call it? Why can't I put this? Oh, I don't have a head, and that's why. Um, I've seen some people even put... Um, what do you call it? Um, oh, tag laser. I've seen some people put a tag laser on these things. I don't personally see a point, because uh, the streaks do have extended range, up to 360 meters, as you can see over there. Um, I don't really see a point in that. It's just an extra ton. It's really up to you if you want to do that or not. So yeah, as you can see, it may, the heat efficiency down here may say 1.73. That's a bit deceptive though, because these things tend to heat up quite a bit. So as you can see, you know, you can put freaking ridiculous amount of ammo in these things. You don't really need that much. Um, you can put double heat sinks, stuff like that. But really, they're not all that big of an issue. They get 52 points of armor on the leg. 
you can shoot it true through that pretty quickly with an AC-20 or directed laser fire. So, pretty easy to beat. I mean, uh, yeah, you're going to get some damage, sure, because it is guaranteed hits, uh, but it's not unmanageable. Just make sure you keep your, your light assets away from these as much as possible and uh, have the mediums, AC-20s and stuff like that go in there and kill them. Um, so yeah, that's, that's a street crow for you. Uh, you're probably going to see these a lot on the clan side. Um, another one you might see uh, is heavy laser novas. So like this, for instance, it's got uh, 12 ER small lasers, and you fire them in groups of six. Now this is particularly punishing uh, due to the sheer fact that it's just, it's just a lot of firepower, period. Um, so these are really good for stripping components off of mechs or tracking a light mech that's particularly hard to hit because you just kind of drag it across, and sooner or later you'll get them. Uh, these are prone to overheat, obviously. Um, you can't fire all 12 at once because you will shut down. Uh, this, this is one of my personal favorite mechs, so you see in here, I've got a targeting computer and a, back, uh, a BAP simply because I don't have room for anything else, and I figured why not, you know, this couldn't hurt. Um, these are really nasty with uh, cooldown modules and things like that, like I've got the, the small laser cooldown. Uh, range modules not really needed, because uh, your engagement ranges are going to be so short anyways. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't really bother with those. Cooldown is more important for that, you know, all-important DPS. Uh, so, as far as other clan mechs, I would avoid the fridge. Sure, the fridge is fast, uh, it's, but it's very, very, very light on weapons, and its arms are absolutely enormous. Um, you know, even, even like a, a medium pulse laser, uh, four medium pulse laser ferret is not going to do all that well compared to like a, a Nova or Street Crow. So I would not bring these. Um, as far as hunchbacks, uh, it's, it's a mixed bag. I've seen some people do well in them. I don't personally prefer them because I'm not really uh, big on hunchbacks. But uh, it's got basically every... All three variants have every single type of engagement type you could want. Every single role you could want. So you can have, you know, anti-light your, your streak, your streak uh, hunchback. Um... You can have heavy laser direct fire, or you can have the auto cannon uh, ballistic builds. You know, uh, also direct fire. They're just not very fast. Um, so, about, I mean, about as fast as a Nova. So, really up to you on that one. I would not recommend them personally. For the lights, there's really no question as to what works. You got your Jenners, and you got your uh, Arctic Cheetahs. Arctic Cheetahs, I think, are better than the Jenners. Um, overall because they're harder to hit and they have ECM, but the Jenners have uh, incredible um, alpha DPS potential with the crazy amount of SRMs that they have. They make uh, really good brawlers, but you probably already knew that. The Arctic Cheetahs are more direct fire and anti-light. They can carry missiles, but I don't like to put missiles on mine. I think it just, uh, they don't, they really have the tonnage for it. So I usually just outfit them with uh, either like two medium pulse lasers, two small lasers, or uh, you know, six small lasers or six small pulse lasers, what, you know, whatever combination of lasers that you like to do, um, it'll work basically. Just, I would avoid the two ER large build that I've seen before and always carry ECM in these. Adders, unfortunately, don't have much of a place. Uh, you could do some really crazy builds. Uh, like one of my personal favorites, I think, is the, uh, the Streak Adder. You know, you have, uh, and I'll just show you. So you got the missile hard points here. I think they changed the quirks on these as well, but I'm not quite sure. Okay, missile velocity, missile velocity. You know. I thought they had a cooldown on one of them, but whatever. So anyways, you take your take your BAP, put that in there, and I usually go with streak fours. You could go with two streak fours and two streak sixes, um, but I just like the streak fours because the they all share the same uh, cooldown. And uh, and heat and all that, so you're not you know stepping on your own toes. Um, six tons of ammo is is plenty, and you know like I said, you could easily upgrade these to to, to streak sixes, no problem. So there you go. You know it's really nasty. Even even on medium mechs, this can be pretty nasty. So um, with streak mechs, I like to put the advanced target decay and any uh, any cooldown modules you might have as well. 
Uh, range, not really a point for streaks because 360 meters is already a really, really long way and there's no guarantee that they're going to be behind cover by the time the missiles get there. So, yeah, target decay, I like having that because uh, if they go around a corner or something and let's say they have uh, radar depth or ECM, um, I think advanced target decay goes through radar depth. You still, you'll still have them for the three and a half seconds after. I'm not quite sure. I haven't tested that yet. Um, but still useful regardless. Um, yeah, so that's what I would do for these. Um, you can also do an Ultra 20 adder for fun if you want. Uh, I don't think it would hold up very well against, say, a, a, a Brawler or Jenner, but, uh, you know, the fun factor is there. So that's it for Clan Mechs. Uh, Miss Lynx and Kit Foxes, no, I, I wouldn't... I just wouldn't bother. And Kit Foxes are too slow, and Miss Lynx are just... They don't bring enough to the table to be worth it, in my opinion. Which is a shame, because they're some... Uh, Miss Lynx are some of my favorite mechs, but, uh, you know... If you if you're aiming to win and not piss off your your teammates, I guess that's something you gotta sacrifice for. So, all right. So on the inner sphere max, um, Raven I already mentioned that you can outfit it to be a brawler, but I wouldn't I wouldn't bother personally. Uh, Panthers are kind of an unknown quantity. They pack a lot of firepower, but it's all in one arm, and they're not the fastest things in the world, but they are pretty small. So I, I need to uh, I need to do more testing on those. Jenners. Mm, really up to you. I think the only one that, that's uh, it's worth bringing is the Oxide. A lot of people have fun with that. It, uh, as far as I know, it doesn't have jump jets, though, so it's a bit limited in mobility in some of the rougher terrain maps. Um, but it's still a very useful mech. So overall, I would take, personally, either my Spider or a Fire Starter. Uh, commandos just don't bring enough to the table either, which is a shame. Cause that's also one of my favorite mechs, but uh, yeah, I already went over that. So fire starters, um, really any of them will work. Um, you can have eight small pulse laser or a five medium pulse laser or ember even if you wanted to. Um, those are always good brawlers. You know, good direct fire uh, can take out pieces of mechs pretty quickly. Uh, spiders, mostly because I do so well in these, I would bring it. Because it also has that, you know, that all-powerful ECM. And uh, I can do quite a bit of damage in these things because they're so hard to hit. It's the only weakness would be uh, Streak Mechs, obviously. Because, you know, uh, they allow bad pilots to hit me all the time. Which is the main reason why this mech survives so much is because it's hard to hit. So, um, yeah, I definitely stray away from Streak Mechs with this mech. So, for lights, you know, Oxide, Spider, Fire Starter... Those should all be good uh, good choices for you. Now, as far as mediums, you have a huge, huge, huge selection for mediums. And most of them are actually pretty viable. Uh, crabs. Crabs are always good. Um, they're, they're just sturdy, well-built mechs. They have a lot of energy. Uh, hard points. It's like their thing. So you got to watch heat management on those. But they are very effective. Um, pretty good counter to streak mechs as well because the damage is just spread all over, which is what you want. Uh, they're pretty quick too, which is good. And then um, blackjacks, of course. Blackjacks are always a nice choice. They make excellent direct fire mechs. Uh, they have the jump jets. Well, the one X doesn't, but uh, firepower on the one X is, is brutal, 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 crushing. Uh, I personally like the AC20 blackjack. Um, I have a thing for AC20s on medium mechs, so this one has served me very well. My personal favorite would be the Yunlo Wang, simply because of how fast it is with an XL300 and uh, all the cooldown perks and everything. Uh, yeah, it, it's just uh, just a good mech if they don't tear your arm off immediately, which surprisingly, in my experience, a lot of people don't bother doing. So maybe you get lucky like me and they don't shoot your arm off in the first 10 seconds, but uh, yeah, pretty effective mech. Uh, another nice one is the 9D. For its uh, shotgun quirks, you know, the, the LB-10X is really, really good, uh, just because of how fast it fires. Um, also very fast mech. So, let's see us. Uh, you got Enforcers. Not really my first choice for scouting. Uh, they do carry a lot of firepower, but I would not really bring these, personally. Uh, Griffin, you can do well in any of the Griffins, to be honest. Um, they're all relatively similar, to an extent. But obviously the best one is the 2N for its ECM and uh, crazy SRM brawler capabilities, as you can see. 
Uh, Shadowhawks, they're a bit slower and a bit clunkier, I think. They encourage you to bring heavy ballistics, which may or may not be your thing. Um, as far as the ballistics, like I said, you just have to land your shots for them to be effective. The extra range on AC5s and 2s don't really matter, because uh, you'll be brawling with them anyways. They're not like... It's very unlikely to hit, you know, a fast-moving light mech at range anyways, so... Uh, yeah. AC20s, AC10s, that's usually where I would draw the line of being good. Um, you know, backup laser. Also, they have kind of big legs, too. Legging is, uh, is a very big thing in scout mode. Um, so, always, always, always armor your legs to the max on these mechs, if at all possible. So Wolverines, like I said, they, they, you know, they suffer from the same thing that Centurions do. They, they have all the weapons in, in, in one arm. If that weapon, uh, that weapon arm goes, you're, you're kind of useless. Uh, but they are very fast, and some of them have uh, good brawling capabilities, jump jets, you know, that kind of thing. Like, you know, this one's got three missile points, so that's, that's not bad at all. Um, this one does too. I think it's only a land-based one, though. Yeah, no jets, but... Uh, so yeah, there's your, there's your mediums. Um, cicadas, I'm not a huge fan of those. Some people make them work, but I just don't think they're heavy enough to, to warrant a medium. They're, they're just a heavier genre, to be honest. Um, Vindicators are an absolute no. Those things are just way, way, way too big. Um, what else is there? Let's see. Oh yeah, Kentaros. Kentaros are nice missile boats. I don't really know how these work, honestly, in uh, scouting mode. I haven't used these mechs ever. Uh, I assume they're pretty nice, though, because they can carry a ton of streaks and maybe an anti-light mech or an SRM heavy mech. Uh, really up to you, but uh, in theory they should work. Tribuches are a mixed bag, mostly because uh, their their front profile is absolutely massive. The side one is, is teeny tiny, uh, but they tend to be pretty fragile, I've found, and um, they don't really warrant themselves well for a brawling role for some reason. They just they just don't work well. Ex with the exception being the 7K, maybe with an AC20 and like two medium lasers. I used to run that build way back when uh, in MRBC League and uh, Run Hot or Die. That was a nice build to have if you didn't have a Hunchback. Uh, so Hunchbacks, you could make these work. Uh, you know, 4SP is a nice standard. Um, but in all honesty, I'd probably go with the Griffin instead. They're just faster and carry more firepower. Unless you want like an AC-20 build, and then I'd, yeah, I'd go for that. But uh, you just gotta have confidence in your ability to land those shots. If you don't land your shots, well, you know, that's kind of useless. Um, yeah. Let's see, what are the Intersphere mechs? So, Urban mechs, obviously not. That's kind of a joke. Uh, Wolfhounds, I don't think these are quite where they need to be yet, as far as quirks. Uh, I mean, it's basically just like a stockier panther, to be honest. It's, it's basically the same mech, uh, without jump jets though, which makes them significantly worse. I wouldn't take these. Uh, I, have, I have very little faith in them, but you know, your mileage may vary. If you're really good in these, yeah, by all means take it, but uh, you won't see me out there in the one, that's for sure. Right, so... Lastly, we'll cover modules. So you got your consumables, max and uh, weapon modules. So as far as consumables, um, usually for pug matches, I would take a UAV and like some kind of artillery or airstrike. But in this mode, you don't really need artillery strikes too much, mostly because a people will be moving around so much. B, um, you might hit your own team due to brawls, and C, that you know you could be, probably do a lot more damage if you had a cool shot, for instance, which is what I would do. UAVs are up to you. Um, they can get rid of an ECM for you, which would be nice. Um, but mostly your team is going to know already where the enemy is going to be, so you don't really need that aspect of UAVs. So you could carry cool, two cool shots if you want. Um, I personally would go with one UAV and a cool shot, like a like a nine by nine uh, cool shot myself. Um, yeah, I, w I wouldn't take artillery strikes. Uh, mech modules mm, really depends on the build. You can't go wrong with radar deprivation. Um, seismic sensor is mostly useless because everyone's going to be moving around so much, including yourself. No point to bring that. 
Uh, target Decay is good for Streak Max. 360 target retention is also good for, well, any mech really because of how often you'll be circled around. Uh, you know, with the speed of these mechs, so you'll be able to keep your target information, which is uh, pretty important. Cap Accelerator has no effect as far as I know. Uh, target Info Gathering, if you have the space for it, absolutely put that on there. Always useful, never a bad choice. And um, Weapon Modules, you know, cooldown obviously is the biggest thing you want to get. Range is not so much important. Um, and yeah, that's basically it. So, there's your light mech building guide, um, you know, current for whatever the meta is currently, which is, uh, you know, what is it, what's today, the 29th, yeah. So yeah, that's my recommendations, um, you know, uh, I, I, if you want to, like, uh, know what my personal few favorites are, it would be, uh, on the inner sphere side, it would be the Griffin 2N, you know, the Unlow Wang, um, Blackjack, AC-20 Blackjack, uh, Sometimes I like to bring the large pulse laser locust just because it's really fun to be in that thing and do well in it. But I would either bring the spider or uh, one of my fire starters like the ember. I'd bring one of those. Uh, for clan, Arctic Cheetah all the way. That's one of my absolute favorites. I don't like the Jenners so much because they just don't fit my play style. Um, I would bring the laser Nova or a street crow if I felt like being really really boring and just you know don't feel like trying I would I would bring a street crow because that's just kinda I don't know it's too easy um if you want a challenge though absolutely use the fridge uh, cause you know these things are really speedy really maneuverable people don't really give them enough credit in plug matches but scouting you know you, you don't really have time or the resources to you know piss about you just want to kinda want to get it done I forgot to mention Shadow Cats, those are kind of a mixed bag as well. They do carry the Almighty God box, you know, ECM, but they're they're pretty fragile, and uh, they don't carry a lot uh, of weapons to bring to the table. And they're not terribly fast. They're they're kind of fast, but they're not terribly fast. Uh, usually, your slot would be better suited to a Stormcrow or a Nova, or even a Hunchback. So, basically, with clans, no, Stormcrows are the almost the end-all be-all. If they had ECM, they absolutely would be the end-all be-all, but they don't, so thank goodness for that. Um, so yeah, there's your lot. And uh, let's see what else. I forget anything. So yeah. I guess as far as roles go, um, one last thing I'd like to add is uh, like kind of a rock, paper, scissors thing, I guess. So, get, say you got your Street Crow, right, and you want to figure out a way to cancel it out, I would say either brawlers, like me like medium mech brawlers with a heavy SRM like the Griffin, or direct fire mechs taking out the legs like the, the uh, AC-20s, because with Streak mechs, as you know, they don't have uh, pinpoint damage capabilities, which means they're going to be spreading a lot everywhere, so face face your mech to them with a side that you don't mind getting damaged. And uh, it'll mostly be absorbed on that side. Um, so light light mechs, like support mechs, really can't counter any specific type all by themselves. Um, but they're nice to have with you when uh, you're, you're in a big brawl. But they should never be the main focus or... Um, out there alone by themselves unless you're confident in your team's ability to stretch out and relocate in the event of a brawl so um, I would say even to the point brawler mechs can be taken out more effectively um, by like an AC-20 due to the simple nature that brawler mechs use SRMs for the most part which spread their damage out more than an AC-20 does so a really good pilot and a really good direct fire mech can probably take out most threats on his own, um, but he can only focus on one target at a time. Um, so that's that's where his weakness is. If you overwhelm him with a bunch of support mechs, yeah, he will eventually die, uh, but he's going to do some damage on the way out. Just something to consider. So always keep a lookout for really skilled direct fire pilots. Like if you see AC-20 Blackjack or a medium laser Blackjack or you know, AC-20 anything, um, I'd probably make him a priority if they don't have street crows. Um, 
So, but if you notice, his shots are missing a lot, and, and you can kind of figure out, get the, the situational awareness that he's a pretty bad pilot, and by all means, you know, ignore him, focus on bigger targets, and uh, yeah, go on about your way. So that is it, basically, for my mech building scouting guide, scout mech building guide, whatever you want to call it. Um, hope it helps. Hope the tips were nice for some people maybe who are just getting into the mode. You know, I, I like the mode a lot because I'm a mostly light and medium mech pilot. Um, so, yeah. Take these tips. You know, you do what you want with them. Um, I hope they help you in your, in your scouting experience. And remember that street crows are not the boogeyman and they can be defeated. So that's it. Y'all have a good one.